Okay, so we're here on uh, 17th Street, just a block away from Rittenhouse Square, where the art show is. Uh, quite uh, an active uh, street today, so we got a lot of traffic coming in. Um, it's just going to be one of those weekends already. It's, you know, sort of the end of a week of the Memorial Day weekend week-ish situation. Rolling into the art show, and then, of course, Pride Month is here, so... Um, wanted to show how much traffic was on 17th Street already um, for the weekend or what have you. And it's perfect weather. It's not too hot, not too cold. It's just right. Uh, so we'll head on this way. Extra activity. The art show. Hi, Joe. How are you? So uh, we probably have extra activity just because um, the art show will bring it in. And of course, it's a Friday. Uh, and so I, I imagine tomorrow will be extra busy and stuff like that. Uh, and then Sunday, of course, the Pride uh, Parade and everything else, which actually the Pride Parade, uh, just in case anyone's looked it up really quick, it kicks off at 11. And then the, there's a festival, I think, that goes on from at least 3 onward. When you look it up, the shorthand side, if you look it up really quick, Philly Pride Parade, on the side, on the calendar, on the still on the Google page, it'll make it seem like everything starts at three. Uh, the parade starts at eleven. So for a second, if somebody looked it up real quick, like, oh, we should totally go out. Um, they and if they went by that information, they would have missed it by a few hours. So <laughs> Philly does this all the time. Like you know, uh, you look something up and it's like that's not three is too late. I know they're already. I read something else. Thank God, um, I read something else beforehand and was able to say. Um, that they will start at uh, 10, they're lining up, 11 is when the parade kicks off, and then the bigger festivities will probably really get rolling around 3 o'clock. It seems, still it seems late to me, 3, I don't know why they had 3 in there. So, uh, hi Dave Jeffrey, how are you? In Niagara Falls, headed over to the Rittenhouse Square Art Show, you can kind of see already, uh, that's the corner where everybody is. Um, so, uh, for Pride Parade on Sunday, Starting at 11 on June 5th at 5th and Arch, I'm certain that um, the festivities, which will be held at Penn's Landing, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> uh, will just be already like getting started. 3 o'clock seems like some random number they put in there that's too late for anyone to... So I'd, I don't know where the 3 o'clock information came from, if you've Googled it in really quick. So anyway, just for anyone out there, 3 o'clock is... Incorrect all around. I would just say 11. <laughs> That's basically it. So anyway, uh, for now we were talking about the uh, fine art show here in Philadelphia. Hopefully it will be a pleasant uh, walking around experience. I had, uh, I have a privatized video, a video from this morning that I privatized um, just because of the stalkerism uh, and the grossness of some people who happen to be milling around Fittler Square today <laughs> and thereabouts. So I had a little bit of a, you know, moment of, ah, you know, that I was really roast out. Um, so it was happening even in Giant Store, Giant Food Store had an episode of people playing a game of like crowding the exit or whatever, and then a guy at Fittler Square. And anyway, so we want to talk about it. We're onward over here towards <laughs> um, the fine art show. This woman here will be a younger version of a former client of mine. This She walks exactly like a client of mine. Who, uh, she could be her daughter or similar-ish. Uh, but anyway, it's so funny how people can look similar and everything else. So we'll go ahead and walk around and do the fine art show. So we've got Sandra or Sandra Sidmack Angle, I guess. I'm kind of guessing at the pronunciation. Uh, we'll go around here. And I will, I wanted to show her she had unusual work here. Um, and everyone, you know, so, let me, <laughs> so this is Sandra, uh, said Mark. So she has a card, I'll pick up a card. So this is what we do at the art show. Um, and we have a card, so. <laughs> so uh, I'll go on here. Uh, I'll just kind of show the inside here. Uh, Bone Town Studio over here. I'll pick up all the cards. I'll do the thing that she's got a special postcard. I'll pick up the small cards just so it's easier for me. But she has a special postcard as well. Um, so there's Bone Town Studio. Uh, 
Oh, panel. Okay, panel. Okay, excuse me. Hi. Um, do we believe? Uh, this is a free country, right? Are we in a free country? That's right. Okay, just checking. So uh, we'll go along and show the R. Hopefully, we live in a free country still. Do we still live in a democratic nation? Okay, <laughs> just checking. A democracy is in action right now. Right. Um, so anyway, go around here. We had a couple people who got something to say because people are from uh, ancient times. So dem democracy in action right here. So we'll show all up in here. So you're, t you're looking at someone who was raped and tortured, anally raped and everything else. So I'm walking around with my camera for the rest of my life. Welcome to the art show, Philadelphia. I mean Philadelphia. I mean Philadelphia. Welcome in. Positivity Plus here with Philadelphia Walks PTSD. Everybody has to be nice and gracious, even though we know that everyone gets raped on a regular basis in Philadelphia. That is a fact. I'm kind of wondering what other shows people go to with their art, if they have different experiences. Is everyone pleasant here in Philly, or are they faking it or what? They're faking it. Philly fakes? That's right. All the time. You're welcome. Uh, it's a public venue uh, with Tarabo. Right, I know what you mean. And if you want to show, technically these people want some sales, so they're on show. It is a, a display. So if you want some sales, we're, we're here to help. Excuse me. Everybody's got to, you know, everybody's... It's like, oh, I'm sorry, do you create artwork? And do you want sales? Like, how do you earn a living, or does your dad pay your, for the trust fund? Is that how you're able to do art? I kind of wonder, this is awesome here. So normally I'm a nice person, unless someone has an attitude. And we already were attituded out this morning because of the rapist over by uh, Giant Market in South Square Market. And so forth and so on. All right, so here we go. We will try to enjoy ourselves in Philadelphia. And <laughs> we'll walk along the art show here in Philly. Pretty crowded ish, I guess. And try not to have everyone rolling their eyes or being all bent in a shape or anything, this, that, and the other, because I'm walking around in a public space where people photobomb people all the time, especially, you know, especially if they want to catch you acting in bad behavior or something like that. Like a public school. Let's totally amp this teacher up real quick, make her snap out, and then we'll call her this, that, and that name, and this and the other, get proof of it on a camera, and so forth and so on. So, or you can arm yourself with a camera in advance. So, so here, this is the one on the pamphlet. It's similar-ish to on the pamphlet because they have, it might not be the exact one. On the pamphlet, they have someone with clouds and haystacks. So. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if you found the same guy? <laughs> All right, so we'll walk around. Uh, here we are with uh, David Oleski's work here. Oh, this is interesting. Do we know? This is seems new-ish to me. So Tanya Tyree, Tyree or something. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so oh. Right. Oh, Marilyn Monroe, is she like a monarch butterfly, MK Ultra, used by the CIA and everything else? Happy birthday, Mr. President. I, I'm right there with you, Marilyn. So my next door neighbor used Marilyn Monroe artwork, and I was retrained, reprogrammed. Here you are, a totally new person here on the art show. <laughs> Magic answering ball. Oh, my gosh, you remember... Right. We, we just, that just came up somewhere else. And it's like, it was in, put in a movie or some sort of clip that I saw where you try, I mean, no one has like the perfect answer. And it's like, I'll just use the ball. I will use the ball. 
you know, of course, if it's not in favor and if you don't like the answer, then it's like, let me shake it again. Let me shake it again. <laughs> I'll just keep shaking the eight ball until I get the right answer. <laughs> so, anyway. So he will go this way. He had to donate something to Garcia. So we'll go along this way. I just heard the name Garcia. And I was watching my nephew's graduation on a Zoom link. Uh, and it turns out there were about 30 people with the last name Garcia. He was a K. So we had to get through the G's, the H's, the I's, the J's, and then they finally into the K. <laughs> and I was like, no way are there 30 Garcias. I can't believe it. So anyway, popular name there in Delaware right now at that particular school. Which is interesting because uh, Joe Biden's president, and if you break down the word to Gar CIA, it could be a game, you know what I mean? <laughs> None of this? Oh, sorry. Oh, wait. Yeah, I didn't see. Wait. I know I got an email from Delgado, so I'm kind of curious where he is. Uh, I'm on his email list. And I'm assuming he's up here at the art show. So I'll kind of go around here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, if I can't read your notes, like I'm kind of, there's a little bit of sun glare. And definitely today's a Friday, if you will, Friday. Uh, already had some issues today. What's the date? It's a third. So technically it'd be three three three. Like six three would be two threes or a six and then a three. So it's a three three three. Sometimes that's an issue. The thirty threes aren't always my friend. Um, even though you think they would be because it's like the number of the magi and all that other stuff, you know. But uh, there are certain numbers that come up and if certain dates that come up and sometimes those are dates when like the energy starts to get freaky or funky or whatever. Look at the sprinkle ice cream cone. I totally, uh, let me go in really quick, actually, that's pretty cool, yeah, rarely do you see, like, how about that, I, John Bandish Art, original oil paintings, oh, and like a, a finch, or a, off to the races, oh, a sandpiper, like a sand, okay, because a, yeah, thank you, <laughs> um, Right, Finch came up so much way back in the day. Wow, look at this. Okay. Uh, so sandpipers and everything. Oh, okay. So, uh, it's amazing, yeah. Anyway, it's nice and quiet on this corner. So this is the quiet corner. So it's nice and peaceful over here. We got lots of energy at the other side by Barnes & Noble. Stuff. Oh my gosh, it's a dog walker. So this is so apropos for Philadelphia. All you need is to have an instigator come out to like wreck that girl's life, get her tortured and everything by having an aggressive dog come out to mess up her cure. Uh, so Philly's good at that, but this is a good indicate this is a good picture of what dog walking could and should look like. Um, it could and should look like that, but in Philly they will mess you up right quick. <laughs> Where is the love? Right, Philadelphia, well, ch tell me about it. Uh, the city of brotherly... Bra 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 bra. I never finish the word with love because I don't experience that much of it in Philly. I totally would love to live somewhere else, but I can't figure out how to afford to get there. So I will openly say that because of what happened here starting in 2011 has continued since as a torture program. So at least there's peace, something peaceful and healthy here with a fine art show. We got special lighting up there, like DeWalt. So, Jerry Beam. So, here, I'm to bring out a panther. And this is what I wanted to show. So, this is the one that they had on the. Uh, that's the artwork on the front. Um, so, very quiet on this side. But a marked difference between the other side, so I'm kind of curious. They've got energy weapons on the north side, apparently, because everyone's in a frizzle up there 
on this side. Um, although, which is interesting because that building is usually a perpetrator building. Ah. So, spent three years in there walking a dog for someone, uh, too much time and money and help on her hands. And Perlman used to live at the top, Ray Perlman, uh, P-E-R-E-L-M-A-N, $8 billion. He was someone worth $8 billion, part of the Perlman family. You'll see his name written on stone all over uh, University of Pennsylvania and Drexel and everything else. Um, and a uh, little hen house up there, but he died a couple years ago, passed away. He had two sons still surviving him, I guess. Uh, and Delaware being the holdings place for their, that money, $8 billion. Is that still, right? Is Delgado up there? I thought I will look in the thing. He wasn't here one other time, and I was like, oh. So, but nice and quiet on this section. So a little, that would be a minor gang stalking thing. It gets way worse. It gets supernatural and stuff like that. So... <laughs> so head on this way so it's kind of fun to be able like I totally if I could come back in another lifetime I would sort of wish that I was in this kind of I know it can be like a lonely-ish existence I think Michael Delgado might talk about that on this site like if you're an artist say, you, say you're not married or you don't have a big family or a partner or what have you uh, your whole life becomes about you know creating the artwork and then trying to sell it um, and hopefully you have like a, at least some sort of social network. I totally, I kind of get that having technically been a writer in the past and then winding up being human trafficked through dog walking. <laughs> I laugh a little. It's actually true here in Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> but how much like in my next lifetime, can I do this instead? Because in a way, you, you only have to put up with people at public spaces like when you're selling, but you're like, you're in charge of your own domain. In a way, like you're in charge, then you, know, you kind of have to put up with like the public and stuff. But otherwise, you can pick and choose, hopefully, and hopefully you make enough money to survive. But you don't have to show up to the nine to five and put up with all the politics and all the power and control dynamics and all the men and all the women who want to sleep with the boss and everything else and try to get y'all, everybody else been out of shape and everything else. That has actually happened at every workplace I've been in. Every single one, there's always the woman who toes the line trying to get up in the grill of some guy trying to make everyone else jealous. It's an actual, and even if you think like you're better than a dynamics, actually you can't avoid it. You kind of get sucked in because you're there for so many hours. It's like, when I, all right, I'll try to ignore this and I'll just eat a sandwich or I'll go to the vending machine or I'll, like, <laughs> even at Starbucks that happened. Oh, God. Actually, I find Starbucks to be an abusive uh, environment in which to work, but people sort of have to suck it up, I guess, if they have to learn an earth uh, work ethic. Um, and that would be old school discipline. We need our kid to learn a work ethic. So there's a different way to help kids or whatever learn a work ethic, and it would be or they could learn like power and control <laughs> dynamics, that's hilarious. So that's, what, anyway, so we're a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, salty today, sorry about that. Um, it's because of what happened this morning. So what happened this morning kind of triggers the whole thing of like everything uh, in Philadelphia. <laughs> so we got some owls in the house here. Of course I have an owl tattoo. I don't know why I have an owl tattoo. It sort of came about as like, that's a that's a whole other level of CIA uh, puppeting program. Um, so I picked two uh, tattoos on my own, little tiny ones. Wound up with a big gigantic owl. We can show it really quick. So wound up with a big gigantic owl. I, you know, I love owls and everything. It was sort of like kind of pushed. It's hard to explain. It's almost like if you had severe peer pressure or if you were married to uh, an invisible mafia and they kind of direct you and you're like, oh, I'll be doing this now. So you can get taken for a ride in Philly, especially if you're a woman by yourself with not much family or friends and bam, you got the DNA ride right quick. 
So I'm happily and nicely exposing it as best I can, <laughs> but I can't help it. It is a little bit of a PTSD trigger. Um, and if someone's desperate to be heard and desperate for someone to do the right thing, um, he or she will keep talking. Oh, yeah, some Bromptons in the house are similar. Um, I need, you know, me, anyway. Uh, let me ask this one. <laughs> I just want to call you right back. All right? Uh, I'll give you. So Philadelphia Walks PTSD, that's my YouTube no, handle. No. I Originally it was just Philadelphia Walks. Um, I almost did Philly Walks because it's more, it's like cuter or whatever, like, but something said no, do Philadelphia Walks, and then I added the PTSD later. Um, Bethlehem, PA. <laughs> so that comes up all the time in my case because I kind of wonder. Sometimes I kind of wonder, um, I actually knew someone from Bethlehem. Um, Meg Guerrero, she was the roommate of the kid that got shot for the iPod. Um, remember that kid that got shot for his iPod at the Starbucks on 4th and South? Uh, so that was a big story here in Philadelphia. Um, and uh, I wound up meeting the roommate of that guy who was shot and killed for the iPod. Um, she would be uh, living with her partner by the time I met her. Uh, and I wound up walking their dogs for them, Kismet and Darwin. Darwin. Uh, and her partner was a principal for um, Chad, no longer exists. Chad was the Charter High School of Art and Design. Remember Chad's with the Bush administration? And I was like, all these falling Chad's, all these falling Chad's. We have hanging Chad's, that's right, sorry, hanging Chad's. Oops, <laughs> Freudian slip there, uh, but hanging Chad's. Uh, all these hanging Chad's, all these hanging Chad's. Who wins the vote, Gore or Bush or whoever, blah, blah, blah. So Steph used to work as a principal at Chad Charter High School of Art and Design. <laughs> Um, and uh, wound up with Meg, who's the former roommate of the guy who was shot and killed for his iPod. This is way in the like mid 2000s, like 2005-ish or so. Um, some flamingos just came from Florida, so that's a. My mom and aunt used to put out flamingos for the Gators uh, football team. Uh, unless the football team was on a losing streak, then they would remove the flamingos, those are the pink ones that you stick in the ground, as like a punishment. <laughs> We are removing the flamingos, they said, until they get back onto a winning streak. So they kind of did that game a little bit. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we go here. This kind of reminds me of, um, I've had like linens and stuff, sort of like, these are colors that my mom, like I would sort of wind up with or whatever. Uh, so, we'll head over here. And she's usually put he stationed here at the corner. Um, we're trying to avoid the, uh, it was Planned Parenthood, trying to avoid the uh, being accosted by Planned Parenthood. <laughs> now, uh, their whole situation, usually Planned Parenthood uh, promotes prevention. So birth control, this, that, and the other, to avoid the whole abortion issue. Um, should we go across? We'll go across. I, w I don't want to have to talk to Planned Parenthood. So, so we're circling back around, uh, and we'll go this way. Uh, <laughs> I know, what if you have an upset situation, right, you don't want to talk to Planned Parenthood, what if there's a history like, oh my gosh, you know, about two years ago I had to make a hard decision and I don't have to talk to these people and so forth and so on. So that's the outskirts, that's the circling around of Rittenhouse Square art show. We'll go in here and show the innards, if you will. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, gosh, like you're going to shoot a turkey or whatever and carve it up. So, <laughs> all right, so we're back to normal now. Sorry about that. I know I could sound a, um, a little bit something-something, and it's, it's because I was a little bit tripped off earlier this morning because of people who were stalking around the corners at Fittler Square and South Square Market. You think they belong to a special group or a cult, and they are involved in Trappist society. So, <laughs> so we'll head on up here and do the inside. Oh, sweet. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, so it's cute little Australian shepherd. Um, on the bench there, on the older side, maybe, he was so cute. I tend to do better with animals just because I've been, you know, no offense to you, you know, Thank you and welcome in, and I appreciate you guys coming in. But I've had such a poor experience with uh, most humans that I prefer animals. It's, you know, most a lot of people are like that. I'll sit here with cats then after all that debacle. 
So I don't have any cats, but I don't have enough money to do that. I, you know, so I'll take care of other people's animals, but I would love to have a cat just to, you know, companionship and to keep calm. I live in a place, though, where you have to uh, get an emotional support certificate in order to have, um, I sort of wound up in this apartment. They kind of probably needed to fill the space anyway. Uh, so here we are, Taylor Brown, Rowan University, inside, oh, it might be a school. Uh, so this is more a school, like uh, University of Wisconsin, uh, L.A. Mans, Manspizer, Spizer. No bullshit on the premises. Right, this is good for Philly. <laughs> we, uh, we would love to have, you know, so we won't get into Philadelphia, but <laughs> so I love that. So, oh, wow, like a realist, Justin Cap over here, very like, uh, I don't know much about art. I just appreciate it from a distance or I appreciate it. I, I never know what to say. I'm one of those people, but I know like that I like something and see it and I can see. So anyway, and he is student uh, studio in, oh, so Studio Incaminati, Incaminati, is that it? Okay, so is this, uh, do you mind me asking what type of artwork, uh, is this realist? Realism. Realism, okay, sorry, I don't know much about art. And what's the name of the school? That... It's an Italian word. Right. So oh. it's the first word studio and the second is Incaminati. Incaminati. It's borrowed from a school back in Italy in like probably the 16th, 1500. That's interesting because it's right. I can get really deep and philosophical on that because it. I, I'll take one. So, um, just because, uh, yeah, there's art going on all the time, even on the streets, and it's like things can get distorted and it, like life. You know, the old saying, imitates art. It's all, it's all great. Right, right, right. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, Penn Academy of Fine Arts, putting up our artwork now. Um, so, oil paintings. So, uh, keeping calm with the Italians. Uh, so, they tend to have a calming effect. Uh, so, we're over here. <laughs> at least for me so uh, and here's some birds on the fountain so some birds feeding right here how cute is that waiting for the water to sort of like they're just getting it as it comes out of the fountain there So there's something to be said for, um, you know, if people, you know, if people have people or feel supported, and I'm wondering if other people out there feel this or experience this, um, if they're not, if they don't feel totally alone, or at least though they have a, a network or a group or what have you, um, then you feel calmer. And it might be an issue too. Um, yeah. So like in general, women are often like, it's easier to sort of, um, what I want to say, go after women or attack them or manipulate them or what have you. And in a way, women kind of need to feel protected. I hate to sound like too sexist or whatever, but there is something to that. So women are petite, they're more easy to gang up on, they're easier to attack, what have you. And um, sometimes having people around to feel protected and secure is like a good thing. I'll, I'll go into a little humor here. Some of my clients in the past used to um, or they bought those, they were kind of newish at the time, these things called thunder coats. So dogs would get frazzled or whatever if it were, say, say there was a thunderstorm or by loud noises out on the street or what have you. Um, so they're like, well, my dog's kind of on the nervous side, so we have a thunder coat that'll keep, like, here's a, see how he's pulling all excited? He wants to hunt down the squirrels and everything. So it's a little bit in that realm, like that would be a high energy dog or what have you. Uh, and maybe easily startled, depending. Um, but if you have a thunder coat, then uh, your dog will feel like safer. It like hugs the dog, kind of. Um, so, th in fact, I think the advertisement says the thunder coat is like a little hug, a little snuggle for your dog, and your dog feels um, safer and protected, as if and loved and stuff like that. So, in a way, um, people are like this, you know. 
uh, and kind of need to feel safe or protected. I guess families do that. I grew up in a home technically that was broken. We had a, you know, uh, whatever you call it, um, you know, broken home basically. Home wrecker came in wreck with a wrecking ball and went went to town. Um, and uh, in a way, that really ruins a sense of security, trust, and everything else in the universe, in the world. And then if people sort of just keep rubbing it in or playing it up or what have you in the community. Um, so his reminds me of Adam a little bit, Adam Flint from Texas. And studio, oh, in, in Caminati or in Caminati, he just says so same studio as the guy across the way. Um, so Adam, you have a doppelganger out here. It looks like you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so we'll head on this way. And... <laughs> Uh, we'll head on down this way. Uh, so it's true with most people. Like most people want to feel like supported, have a network. If you're fortunate enough or lucky enough to have like a, a healthy um, family or network or to have a group in place to feel that sort of sense of safety, then that's good. I mean, I know there are a lot of people out here who are anxious and nervous and feel this, that way, and the other. It looks like a sweet green-ish. It looks good. Uh, never when sweet green didn't take cash. They had cashew as a sign. <laughs> cashew, you get it, uh, you know. Um, but they, I think, in later years they would be kind of forced to accept cash because there are people saying we want to pay cash. We don't have our, car our card with us or whatever. Uh, so if they wanted to keep selling their salads, they had to uh, accept cash. Um, so people were trying to get rid of cash. It's, it could be a scare tactic. Like it's easier to hack. Like you know. I don't know, you know, it's, you know, people will do anything to make it harder for people. We don't want to ever have cash. We just want to use cards and stuff. Well, it's, it could, you know, the world out there, the dark side, the factions of, you know, we'll say gang stalking or whatever, they would love to be able to say, oh, like, it's scary to use your card all the time and not have cash. Or we want to scare people who only use cash because for all kinds of reasons. You know, they may have a certain lifestyle or maybe they don't can't get approved for a credit card and their bank ATM Maybe they have a bank card, but, you know, there's all kinds of people that are out there making money in all kinds of ways. Uh, and, or there are people here who don't feel like they're part of the American system, so they don't want, like, credit cards or a bank card. They keep their money a certain way. Um, and, you know, in a way, the no cash sign would, like, alienate them from being able to buy a salad at Sweetgreen. But they, I'm pretty sure you can use your... Uh, Visa and ATM now. So you figure, right, you have a lot of people. I was thinking like migrant workers or people in fields and stuff. And with old practices, they just know that they ha they just are just used to operating a certain way and maybe they don't want a credit card. They see it as like a bad omen. In fact, I used to work for a company called North American Publishing Company. I also freelance. I wrote for certain magazines within that company, one of which included direct marketing and a direct meaning we actually examined like the junk mail that you get in your mailbox and broke it down to like its elements to see how effective it was, what formulas they use and everything else. So in that uh, process, um, came across, I was able to talk to a Latino guy who was in the business of direct mail and he was talking about like trying to sell for funeral services or insur life insurance and how taboo it would be to get life insurance. Like in the Latino world, particularly like Mexican or what have you, certain types of people, like I'm not going to buy life insurance. That's if The minute I buy life insurance, I'm going to set the wheels in motion for someone to die. Like it's sort of that mentality. Like am, if I buy this, am I, man, am I bringing, welcoming something into our realm, into our world? So they had to find a way to get around it. Like, you know, they tried to use direct marketing tactics to say, you know, please believe us, like if you buy life insurance, should someone pass away, it's the greatest gift you can give your children or your, or your wife who's still living, who's still raising the children or what have you. Um, so it was an interesting, things like that would come up all the time uh, in this job that I had. And um, fascinating because it's a very, it's a mentality that runs deep and could span most, even families operate like this. If I say this, it's going to welcome it into the world. It's almost old wives' tales -y, or you believe in sort of a supernatural-ish way or um, what have you. So it's like, like, or the idea of like if you say anything negative or if you say anything that you get. I mean, anybody gets it. I don't want to welcome that in because it will open the door for that 
thought process. So they had to come up with a clever marketing campaign to try to sell life insurance to people who were making enough to pay into life insurance. And, you know, of course, a life insurance company wants to make money. But also this guy was saying, you know, technically they do have fatalities. Some of these people work in dangerous fields. And if there's enough money left over for the kids and the mom, should something happen? Um, and in that case, there's a lot of men working, you know, or what have you. Um, so that's that. So we'll head on this way. And here's the, all uh, right, the Australian Shepherd meets Border Collie meets whatever and decides to go after all the birds, all the pigeons on the other side of the fence. So, <laughs> so he's, he's on the ready to pounce, right? So I don't know if a Thundercoat would change his particular instincts, but there are dogs like little Yorkies and stuff or little tiny ones, and they're out here shaking and shivering all over the place. And some people have found out, oh, if I get them a Thundercoat. Sorry, I jumped subjects really quick. Um, but I had several clients who bought Thundercoats for their dogs to keep them calm. And it was, you know, in a way it was a little bit funny because I was like, I w can I get a Thundercoat? I want a Thundercoat, you know. <laughs> so, um, oh, look how cute this uh, the Real Philly, yes, peace. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm down here at the art show. We're kind of talking about, like, life insurance. And I used to work for a company that sort of dismantled direct mail. Most people call it junk mail that they get in the mail. And it's like, oh, I don't want another person selling another thing. Um, but I was talking to a guy, Latino-ish guy, who was saying he had to come up with a creative idea to sell life insurance because it's the get if you can pay into life insurance and you're in a secure job, um, it's one of the best gifts you can give your children or a spouse should something happen to anyone and they pass away early or later in life. Um, imagine like if you had a secure job and you could keep paying into life insurance and could leave your kids like $500,000 and you're used to like just scraping by on 25, at best $25,000, you know? Um, so uh, anyway, this is something that came up you know, <laughs> with some passings in our family, and it's like, oh, like, I, I would almost go into the business of trying to sell life insurance, but in the Latino world, the idea of inviting such a thought, like, I'm not going to buy life insurance because that'll trigger the wheels in motion and someone will wind up dying because I bought life insurance. It's that mentality, which is a little bit old school, um, and it's like, people who operate a certain way brain-wise. So anyway, we're talking about that. Um, and then, of course, I was looking at the, uh, you know, uh, Australian Shepherd slash Border Collie, who um, uh, is ready to pounce over there, and then Thundercoats for little dogs who get all frazzled and nervous and everything. Uh, so we'll go this way. I was trying to decide which way to go here. Everybody's coming in with their dogs to walk. Um, and I was saying, I wouldn't mind a thunder coat because I get all frazzled and all, start, you know, all nervous and everything if certain things happen in the city. But it has to do with uh, something that happened many years ago. And it's like, uh, you know, it, uh, all it takes is a second uh, to trigger someone into uh, high states of fear, if you will. So we'll go this way. Um, basically was showing the art show here at Rittenhouse Square, which is typically a peaceful experience. Um, and I wanted to see if Michael Delgado was here because I got an email and I, I didn't open it. It like came through. Oh, there's a big bird. Is that one of them? No. Oh, it's just a pigeon. All right. Every once in a while you see like a, a like something, you know, like an eagle or an owl fly around. And it's like, wait, where did that guy come from? Um... So Michael Delgado keeps a studio here, um, but he, I think he lives in the Keys. The last time I checked, he lived in the Florida Keys, like Key West. Uh, he's usually up on the front row. I didn't see him when I first came in here. Um, saw an email pop in. I didn't open it, but to me, that was a signal that he was coming in. Like, you know, if you're on the list and subscribed. So I happen to love his artwork. Um, and several years ago... I sort of went through a short time period of like kind of having to hop around and couch surf a little bit because it was a whole situation of like, ah, I, you know, um, and I so much want, I desperately wanted one of his paintings. And it's that thing of 
it's a thing of if you don't have your own home or your own apartment or whatever, and you see all this and you want, it's like, I want to be able to have, I want to be able to have this for my, it's that kind of thing. So usually he's up here. Uh, I could look on the map. He's usually in this vicinity. Is he not here? Usually there's the olive green van and everything. Uh, he looks like a freedom fighter. From <laughs> so he could be on a different section and I missed him. But this is typically his section. I'll have to look at the email. Uh, Rob Zane, that's new-ish. This looks like Art House uh, has the same designs in here, the new, brand new Art House uh, on uh, South Broad Street. Um, I looked at some, I, like I'll go in, Adam Flint, a viewer, has come in and uh, he's like, he's someone who looks at all the real estate and everything to see what's going on in Center City, Philadelphia. Anyway, I decided to check out a link at the Art House. Um, which, this is similar to the Art House, uh, at least the showrooms or the show apartments that they have. Um, and it's spelled H-A-U-S, Art House. And they call their condos houses, H-A-U-S-E-S. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll go on and look. Just I'm curious. So it's interesting because, it, you know, it's one of those things where you could wind up in a place like that or you want that cozy, like, older home-ish where there's – it's interesting. Like, if you go for one thing, you kind of miss out on another thing. And the coziness – cozy wouldn't be a word that I would use, but it is, like, high-scale, nice, upscale. So some people like the old-school home, cozy, stuff like that, and so on. Um, so head on this way. Um, okay. We'll head in here. Hey, where's right, David Vigo? So, right, we'll head over here. So, Thank you. And Sandra said that. Yeah. Uh, we'll head on over here to TD Bank ish. Which light is which? We'll go this way. Everybody's having horn meltdowns over here. Because someone was, I think, looking, not paying attention to the light. <laughs> of course, it's kind of, you can't really go far this way. Um, do I want to go this way? or? Um, so because of the traffic and everything, I'll kind of, Tesla. So I don't know, has anyone, uh, the Teslas, when they back up, they sound like ghosts. Has anyone noticed this? I, yeah, you know, all of a sudden, like, I'll pass by four Teslas and they're backing up and it's like, you know, it's a total ghost sound. So, um, that's interesting to me. Oh, Michael Jackson's down here. The Michael Jackson impersonator is down here. Uh, so, I guess with the art show, he can't be up in there. So, here he is. <laughs> HD Supply. So... I used to know someone whose initials were HD, and every time I see that, I'm like, you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right, right, outdoor voices. Are <laughs> so we love Michael Jackson. So, um, yeah. <laughs> right, Billie Jean's not my lover. Right. The kid is not my son. Right, we're going way back. Who didn't love Michael Jackson? I mean, in a way, like, you couldn't help it. Uh, you know, it's one of those tragedy situations. It's like, what's going on in the world? And how do you know what's real? What isn't? Blah, blah, blah. So forth and so on. I don't like to get all up in the machine because it's like, it's too much. In fact, I was talking about the Jackson family earlier because they went through a whole battle of, you know, wills, if you will, like, literally. Um, and I remember, like, some members of the Jackson family were you know, sort of at odds with other members of the Jackson family. And then everyone pulled out their phones and started recording each other on the driveway of, like, whatever of his, like, compound or whatever it was where he had the big gigantic thing. Um, so, and it's like, wait, that's way back. Back then I didn't even think about phones and all that kind of stuff uh, and recording. And it's like, oh, yeah, like, right, people can just whip it out really quick. and <laughs> So they were trying, it was a... You know, anyway, so we'll head this way. Um, it is, I have my $6 new watch here from Walmart. It'll do the fire thing. Oh, oh, actually, 206. 
So it actually looks like that normally before it, it settles in. It's too funny, but on the camera, it'll just keep doing it. But when you press the button, it will do that until it settles in on the time. And 2.06, or sorry, 12.06, the light messes it up. It's called a flame. It's called He Virgo, all one word, H-E-V-I-R-G-O, flame watch, flame wrist watch. Uh, so you just like, you know, it's got holes. You just, you know, plug it in there. <laughs> all you do is like set it. You use the buttons to set the time. Um, and it's super easy to do. I figured it out in like 10, less than 10 minutes, like five minutes, maybe even three. That's how easy that was. Uh, security over here at Capital One. Um, so for $6, I realized I kind of needed this watch with the dog walking. And um, when I live stream, my phone doesn't show the time. The only thing I can see is like a timer. So I've been out for 45 uh, minutes and 58 seconds, 59, 50, 46 altogether. So there's the fine art show. Um, I picked up a couple. Um, this is Justin Knapp. Now he does realist type stuff, so it's in the nude-ish category, so we'll be careful with that. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for stopping in. I really appreciate it. I know I was a little salty in the beginning of, <laughs> in the beginning because something kind of triggered something and I was like, ah, you know, I didn't know if people were rolling their eyes cause I was live streaming. So that triggered me into salty mode for a few minutes. But anyway, uh, that is, um, the art show down here at Rittenhouse Square. Um, I hope to catch you on the backside later. I might do a night walk later tonight because I love the lights and I don't have a dog walk uh, this evening unless something changes. Uh, but as far as I know, as of right now, um, that's it. So thank you so much, The Real Philly, uh, Dave, Jeffrey, Joe, and whomever else. I don't know if Dave from Bangor came in or not, or if he was busy today. Um, thank you so much and I will see you later and peace, peace, peace. Uh, uh, namaste and sugi. Uh, so you know, Bhavantu, so forth and so on. It's all up there in the yoga house. Thank you so much. Peace, peace, peace. I kind of forget the peace, peace, peace.